Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today I made a live stream on Instagram and um, I picked some leaves from Nogu One and I'm gonna start now doing the shaxing. I'm starting on, on a hot walk with a nice bed of embers. It's gonna be a bit noisy at the beginning and I need to flip it quickly, otherwise they will burn. It's quite a big walk. So today I made a live stream. Um, I went to the our tea garden to pick the tea. You can find this live stream on Instagram. And this is a we only got actually what my mother-in-law picked because my brother-in-law actually had sold the tea to to other people, so he didn't carry the leaves back home. This is quite common in Jing Mai. It's quite flexible actually. You you don't always process only the tea from your garden uh, sometimes you can sell the tea from your garden and uh, and buy leaves from uh, other people so okay it needs to be very active now because otherwise it's gonna burn but i hope to obtain a quick reduction for this tea and then with the embers we will steam the leaves gently there's not much life flame going on now in the fire Buyong dong ma buyong dong. And so, today, well, we're just after the Water Splash Festival, and typically the Water Splash Festival signifies the end of the early spring harvest. But this year is not uh, usual. We have a very late harvest, which means that I think we're just two thirds into the spring harvest and actually today we got some material from three different gardens and one of them is, is, is it in its second flash and you can already feel that the material is getting older we'll probably have a lot more yellow flakes in this material this one that I'm cooking now though looks okay it still looks like early spring even though it's also a second flash because we processed a lot of that Nobu and garden leaves at the beginning of the harvest but it still looks like good material so let me finish that fast cooking and then I will start talking about today's topic it's related to the harvest on top of being very late uh, this harvest is also quite scarce actually we got almost nothing from our natural tea gardens. While we've made about 200 kilo of uh, leaves from the ancient tea trees, we've only made uh, 50 kilo from one harvest of our garden, of, of our natural tea garden in Liodui. And the other natural tea gardens, they haven't sprouted yet. I think it's uh, due to a lack of fertilization. Generally, the, the yield in those gardens has been lower and lower every year and the fact that the ancient tea gardens grow better under a uh, drought condition it probably means that uh, there's something there's something to to deal with them um, it has something to deal with the the forest the forest cover i think the forest cover helps uh, fix humidity especially in the morning i guess we, we can find a bit of dew in the gardens despite the the weather being very dry and I guess this is what helps a bit at um, having those those gardens grow in such dry weather so this is probably one perk of having forested tea garden you get some more um, maybe a bit more stability in the yield you get it's less influenced by the weather conditions. Although that's by a small margin, it's still quite influenced. So I'd like today to talk about uh, the economics of poor tea and the current uh, condition. As you know, poor tea tends to get more expensive every year and a dry, uh, a dry season with low yield is often a good reason for the farmers to increase 
the prices of the fresh leaves. Of course, the, the farmers don't really decide themselves the price of the fresh leaves. It's defined very organically by the, the supply and demand mechanism, something nobody really has control on. And yet this year, despite having a very low yield, the price of tea hasn't increased uh, compared to last year. Now in the, actually the price of tea has barely increased since the start of the COVID crisis. And this is because, you know, like high quality poor tea is kind of a luxury product. And in times of crisis, people don't want to spend money on these things. They prefer to save, or at least that's what I read in the news, like the, uh, in China, people's savings, savings account are high. They have lots of money in the bank, at least probably on average. I guess for many people, that's not the case. But if people are mm, afraid of uh, investing, investing being in, whether it is in, in the companies or in goods like poor tea, um, they have uh, kind of slowed down on all kinds of investment, which of course might be a problem. Now, today I read an article on the BBC saying that the Chinese economy was recovering well, was benefiting a lot from the reopening of China. And during the Water Splash Festival, I went to the more touristy villages in Jingmai, like Wangji and Nogan, those two villages are particularly touristy. And there were lots of tourists. And I'm happy that uh, our village, Jingmai main village, is not uh, like this, because uh, it doesn't really feel like countryside anymore, these places. It's really just a tourist hotspot now. Although it's still somewhat well maintained, I wouldn't like our village here to to be like these. Now they, these villages, they welcome tourism more than in the main village because they have fewer uh, ancient tea gardens. Honestly, the tea there is not that great. So maybe it's suitable for selling to tourists. Here in Jingmai village, we don't really rely on tourists for selling tea. It's mostly tea enthusiasts and somehow investors, so more, maybe more wealthy people who live in the cities who c come and purchase the tea. Or it is also um, the big factories in Monghai who purchase the tea. And uh, well, one concern might be if the UNESCO application uh, works out, because you know that well, since 2013, Jingmai has applied to the UNESCO to become a World Heritage Site. And well, it's been a very convoluted deal, but apparently it might, it might really enter the UNESCO next year, but it's really not sure because it feels like every year they tell us that it will be next year. So we'll see. But uh, when I graduated um, the agricultural school, my, my master's degree thesis, was about this subject. What what makes the reputation of the mountain? Uh, well, yeah. W what is reputation in in renown in the context of uh, tea production? So I I took Jingmai as an example, and also um, thought a bit about what could be the the consequences if uh, Jingmai entered the UNESCO uh, World Heritage Site. And I think that when it comes to the tea price, I don't think it will increase because there's a lot of elasticity in the, um, in the supply. Like if, if you're a tea factory in Monghai, and uh, let's say you need to buy 100 tons of tea from uh, different mountains every year, well, you can fairly easily switch suppliers. And if uh, Jingmai tea gets too expensive because of the demand from tourists, then those uh, companies will stop buying in Jingmai and therefore the price will decrease. So I think tea has a fairly high price elasticity. Yet 
there's also that that's in theory at least the problem is mm, it's like the oil price you know when when the, the price of crude oil increases very quickly the price of fuel increases at the pump but when it decreases it, it takes more time or sometimes it doesn't decrease as much at the pump and it's because of psychology because the the tea sellers who are used to selling at a given price they they prefer to to make more profit than really uh, keeping the uh, bringing the price down uh, considering their actual costs because they know maybe their customers is used to paying the same price things like that and this is true for every step okay every um, every level of the supply chain so even for the tea farmers maybe they wouldn't want to sell their tea uh, at a price below the, the price that it was last year even if the market is not good and the fact that in Jing Mai people uh, most uh, most houses have a tea factory they have the ability to process the tea in in the case the, they are not satisfied with the price then they will make the tea themselves and will try to sell it as dry tea so there's this possibility of acting either as just a tea, tea picker selling fresh leaves or a tea a tea factory selling dry tea it also gives them a bit more option and further uh, emphasizes this uh, phenomenon of like prices going up easily but not going down as easily so usually what happens is that you can't expect the price of tea to really decrease decrease much actually the fact that it's a dry year today with low yield and that the price of tea doesn't increase it shows that at, the, at this moment the the poor tea market is not doing very well there's also um, uh, a lot of inertia in the market because since the supply chain is quite long and you have the storage step at each point so what i mean by this is that for example people who buy the tea uh, this year they will maybe um, put it in their tea shop in the big city or in its storehouse and they won't necessarily resell it on the same year so it means that people who bought tea in the past even if they have sales now they are not necessarily compelled to buy the poor tea this year so this is a, a market dynamics which is different from uh, green tea for example in which uh, at every year you just erase the blackboard because uh, people want one fresh tea and the tea from the past years doesn't really influence the tea from this year so for example last year was quite rainy and we had a high yield and we could think that um, people who bought that tea still have it in storage since we if we consider that at this time the the sales were pretty bad people who bought the tea for their tea shop they might still have a lot of stock from uh, 2020 2021 and 22 okay from the covid years so maybe they feel less compelled to uh, buying tea this year now another phenomenon is despite the recovering economy uh, we could think that uh, people mostly spend their money nowadays towards uh, traveling so yeah yeah I, I was saying that I went to the touristy villages in Jing Mai and actually there are a lot of tourists so uh, like the, the guest houses this kind of uh, facilities the restaurants they are doing very well actually it's just that people don't seem interested in buying uh, large quantities of tea and interestingly I was at my friend's place and uh, so we're in Jing Mai and, and the tourists they come to and they want to drink coffee in Jing Mai <laughs> so I was a bit uh, baffled at this um, so it's interesting to see that the tourists who visit Jing Mai might not be the, the real uh, target customers for these high quality teas i think the high quality teas market will remain 
in the hands of the, the tea lovers, usually more uh, wealthy people who have the tea, who enjoy tea as a hobby, and also somehow invest in it. Now, um, I think people are overly pessimistic because they see that they are not selling the tea, but uh, I think that the sales will, uh, will come back actually in the, um, in the next couple of months. Once, once the, the people will have consumed the, their freedom of being released from, uh, like from the shackles of three years of zero COVID policy. We, we experienced that uh, phenomenon uh, last year, actually last year's during just while uh, wh when the governments had uh, really relaxed the COVID policies worldwide and especially in the Western world, uh, we had a massive drop in sales during, during the release of our 2022 uh, spring harvest. And uh, I think it's a good business lesson to know that uh, even if you're uh, working hard and trying to do things well, there are trends in the market and you should be able to shrug them off, both financially and psychologically. Uh, it's not a big deal because we'll be in business for the next couple of decades, probably, well, surely, I would say, hopefully. <laughs> and, um, and so the market has highs and lows and it's not really a problem. A crisis can actually be good for the consumer because it helps, uh, like if some businesses go bankrupt, it's usually the weaker businesses. And so it probably means a better offering for the consumers that way. So of course, it's always hard to see businesses struggle, but businesses who have strong foundations should be able to handle a, cri a crisis for a couple of years. And fortunately, that's our, that's our case. The, the decrease in sales didn't lead to really any, any problem uh, beyond just not having that many orders uh, during a couple of months. And this year, actually, we're having a lot of orders. We're having a, almost double the orders from uh, last year, if you take uh, the same uh, period. So um, I think it's also good not to be to focus on the statistics and just do the job diligently. But what I'd like to say about the economics of poor tea is that, um, yeah, I think, I think on average we, we, will, we will still see the, the price increasing. And my guess is that uh, next year or towards the end of the year, there should be a higher demand in, uh, in tea, I think, in China. Now, I'm taking a lot of risks by, by saying this, of course. Uh, it's hard to predict the economy. But this is really what happened last year for us. We had a, a very weak uh, spring harvest release. But then at the end of the year, it was actually, it, it really caught up. And in the end, we had the same uh, sales as the year before which for us is not that great because we're used to having a uh, strong growth every year. But when you look at the general context and compared to my friends in poor city, it's very good because yeah, people have been struggling really in uh, poor city in the, in the tea markets. It seems like the Chinese are not drinking tea anymore. No, of course, I think we just need patience and everything will get sorted out. But that's also something to consider. It's actually a good time for you to buy poor tea because um, the, the price, I would say, is, uh, is quite low. Well, you could say it's like buying a house, you know. You often hear people say, oh, they bought at the right time, you know, I should have bought a house earlier. But you can think that every generation says that because the price of houses increases constantly. And of course, there are temporary highs and lows, um, but such is the nature of economy. And so when it comes to poor tea, I think this is a great season this year. And the price is not too high. 
So yeah, yeah, I'm quite optimistic because I think we can have a really good product. I see uh, sometimes on the forums people saying that uh, we've increased our prices a lot since the, we started making tea and that's really for two reasons. The first time I'm, uh, when I started selling Jingmai tea in 2012, I think I would say the equivalent of the, the Jingmai Gulan for something like 40, 50 dollars. At the time the tea was really that cheap. It was very, very cheap. Um, compared to now and yet at the time we thought the, the the price was crazy and people were saying oh I should have bought that five years ago you know and people always thought oh there's no way it's gonna be more expensive I remember one time uh, we heard about like in 2010 Lao Banzang tea was like a uh, hundred and fifty dollars a kilo and that sounded absolutely expen uh, absolutely a, cr a crazy price um, at the time because it was maybe uh, five times the price of the other mountains and yet nowadays it's easily ten times that price so so you I think we, we have to accept uh, that these things are getting more expensive every year and at least for the Gushu I don't think it will decrease now maybe we will see a new ran range of products picking up and it would be the, the middle range because in uh, around 2007 uh, the governments they well a lot of people planted tea uh, this is for example the the forest tea that we get from Laos it was mostly planted in the early 2000s when it started having a demand for uh, poor tea now that this tea is growing as and getting a little bit aged, uh, we could expect uh, those bushes to produce pretty good tea, and maybe at some point it will be able to compete with the Gushu, and then for this kind of tea, there wouldn't be that much, um, so much trouble having a large supply. Uh, last year, when I went to the Lao Banzong area, I noticed that all the countryside in that area between Lao Banzang and Xin Banzang was planted with small trees. So of course the real Gushu from Lao Banzang will remain expensive and it will be like the, <laughs> the Lamborghini of tea, only a luxury product, only accessible to the wealthiest or to the most uh, determined dedicated tea drinkers. But there will be an offering of uh, teas with similar tastes, although maybe not as powerful, which will be much more affordable. You could say maybe the same for aged tea. It seems that, uh, well, since 2007 and after, people have been storing a lot of tea. And so that means that uh, at some point they will want to sell that tea. And we should be able to access some cheaper HTs. Although when it comes to this, from my experience, yes, a lot of people um, are willing to sell the tea, but a lot of it has not been very well stored. Now, I'm in poor city, so we're not like professional tea, uh, uh, tea stores, but uh, so that, that's why I source the tea from my friend in, in the tea market. I only have three H cakes for now but they are really well aged but that's really an exception no i think the massive stocks of aged poor tea are uh, in guangdong and i'm sure that people who invested so much in the tea took care in how they store the tea and well we, we should if if they decide to to start selling their tea after that aging period we should see a fairly affordable uh, HT. But I also think there's a, a change in the demand because when we started drinking poor tea, everyone assumed that the poor tea is meant to be aged. But what I, what I find in practice is that a lot of people just enjoy drinking uh, fairly young tea. And so the idea that you should um, store tea like for 10 years before uh, drinking it, 
I think has been refuted simply by the by the consumer demand, and that's why that there's a a new a new kind, a new poor tea market, where people really enjoy drinking the the young teas, and personally I, I cannot say I enjoy the aged teas more than uh, the young teas, and well I don't know honestly if uh, that gushu that I'm processing now will taste better in 10 or 15 years compared to now, I think it's just a matter of taste. It's just like wine, you know, sometimes uh, people think that uh, wine is meant to be aged, but only a, a tiny minority of wines uh, should be aged for more than five years. And uh, they are the most famous ones, but by far the, the exceptions, we know them because they are really expensive, but most of the wine you drink is typically under five years old. So, so my point here in this video is that we shouldn't really worry too much, I think, about these, uh, these economical developments. But just like everything in life, we should probably acknowledge that, uh, well, maybe you, you should just look uh, at the deal uh, today more like ye each year and see if you're able to afford the tea you like this year. Um, when it comes to investment, well, I think if you really want to invest massively in tea, if you want to invest in tea and in the hope of reselling it later on, you cannot really just buy one cake or a couple of cakes. You, you should really uh, buy large quantities of tea and that's actually true for the wine as well. A lot of wine enthusiasts think that they can build a small collection of wine and think they can really make a profit on reselling it and after 10 years they find out that they have a hard time reselling that wine just because they have no uh, name in the market and uh, I think the same would go for the for the poor tea actually. But if you buy it as a tea enthusiast Mm, I think there's nothing better really in terms of aging than uh, than tasting your tea, you know, every once a year, for example, and just enjoying how it develops. Because the tea that you've been aging at home for 10 years, obviously, you will never find it anywhere in the market. And at that time, it might be even hard to, to have a good traceability on some of the teas. Okay, so that was a bit of uh, rambling, but I hope I explained a few things about the, the economics of poor tea. I could go into much further detail, but now I can see that the tea is dry and that strategy of starting with a hot wok and then finishing on just embers, it worked pretty well. The tea is just li like I like here. It's nice yellow. I don't want it to get too dry as usual and so I will leave you here and thank you very much for watching and I hope this year harvest will be uh, as good as you expect so thank you and see you later bye bye